Good day everyone, this is Renz Angela Di Calzada and my topic for Earth Science for this week is all about the hypsography of the continents and ocean floors, specifically the continental shelf. So what is a continental shelf? A continental shelf is the edge of a continent that lies under the ocean. Continents are the seven main divisions of land on Earth. A continental shelf extends from the coastline of a continent to a drop-off point called the shelf break, as you can see on the picture. From the break, the shelf descends toward the deep ocean floor in what is called the continental slope, which will be discussed to you by Ms. Giselle Faith Antonin. The actual boundary of a continent is not its coastline, but the edge of the continental shelf. The width of the continental shelves vary. Along parts of the U.S. state of California, for example, the continental shelf extends like or less than a kilometer or 0.62 miles. But along the northern coast of Siberia, the shelf extends about 1,290 kilometers or 800 miles. The average width of the continental shelf is 65 kilometers or 40 miles. Even though they are underwater, continental shelves are part of the continent. Most continental shelves are broad, gently sloping plains covered by relatively shallow water. Water depth over the continental shelves averages about 60 meters or 200 feet. Sunlight penetrates the shallow waters and many kinds of organisms flourish, from microscopic shrimp to giant seaweed called kelp. Ocean currents and runoff from rivers bring nutrients to organisms that live on continental shelves. So here are the examples of the organisms that are present in the continental shelves. We have the plants and algae, which make continental shelves rich feeding grounds for sea creatures. The shelves make up less than 10% of the total area of the oceans. Yet all of the ocean's plants and many types of algae live in the sunny waters. In some places, deep canyons and channels cut through the continental shelves. Little light penetrates these submarine canyons. As you can see in the picture, it is encircled by the red circle, and they are sometimes the least explored areas of continents. Often, submarine canyons are formed near the mouths of the river. Strong river currents cut deeply into the soft material of the continental shelf, just like they erode rocks above ground. For example, the Congo Canyon, extending from the mouth of the Congo River, as you can see on the illustration, and it is encircled by the Black Circle, and it is 800 kilometers or 497 miles long, and 1,200 meters or 3,900 feet deep. The Congo Canyon is part of Africa. So where is the Congo Canyon in the illustration? The Congo Canyon is the one being encircled by the red circle. So how is the continental shelf being formed? Over many millions of years, organic and inorganic materials form continental shelves. Inorganic material built up as rivers carried sediments, bits of rock, soil, and gravel to the edges of the continents and into the ocean. And these sediments gradually accumulated in layers at the edges of continents. Organic materials, such as the remains of the plants and animals, 
also accumulated. Many continental shelves were once dry land. Some 18,000 years ago, at the peak of the most recent ice age, much of the Earth's water was frozen into huge masses of ice called glaciers. The sea level dropped, exposing continental shelves during this glacial period. Scientists say that sea levels were perhaps 100 meters or 330 feet lower than they are today. The continental shelves between North America and Asia were probably exposed during the Ice Age. Some scientists say that the shelves provided a land bridge between the two continents. People may have used this land bridge, now the Bering Strait, to migrate from Siberia to what is now Alaska, as you can see on the illustration or on the picture, and becoming the first human beings in North America. Biologists have also found the remains of land-based plants and animals on shelves that are now underwater. For example, scientists have discovered 11,000-year-old mastodon teeth and spruce pollen off the coast of the northeastern United States. Scientific instruments can show that the mastodon and pollen lived during the time of the last Ice Age. When the shelves were above water, glaciers moved over them and changed their surfaces. As huge alpine glaciers move quickly downhill, they gouged deep, narrow valleys. Now the valleys are filled with seawater. These narrow, flooded valleys that descend into the continental shelf are known as fjords. And in the picture, that is an example of a fjord that is found in the Norway. The legal definition of a continental shelf is different than the geographic one. According to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, Every nation has a continental shelf extending no more than 200 nautical miles from the nation's coastline, for example, in the Philippines. We also have the, the exclusive economic zone which extends 200 nautical miles and part of it are the Sprati Islands or also known as the Kalayaan Group of Islands. That would be all my report. Thank you so much for listening.